The other important thing is when it comes to the production of ketones, your body uses these fat sources, whether it's from the food that you're eating or if you have excess fat in the body, your liver will take that fat and produce it into ketones. Now you could just jump into a three day water fast, you know, mind over matter, just cut out food altogether, fast for three days and say, yes, I did it. However, I've tried this before in my younger years and let me tell you, it does not end well. You either end up eating everything in your fridge, eating off your arm, you just want food fast and you can't get enough of it. And then you almost make up for a lost time of not eating and it just turns into an awful situation where you feel guilty and you feel disgusting. You just totally lose control. So I do not want this happening to you and that is why I'm creating this video series to make sure that the introduction of a three-day fast is safe, efficient, and also something that you can do long-term where you can go into these fasts easily, sustainably, and transition properly as well. So the third step in getting into a prolonged fast is understanding macros. And what I mean by macros is looking at how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates you're getting in each day. For this week, I want you to be very aware of the amount that you're getting in each one of those categories. And if you're thinking about food almost as like a pyramid, the top of the pyramid should be carbs, the middle should be protein, and the most that you should get of food intake in the macros should be fats. So if I was to break that down even further, Fats would be all the things like MCT oil, olive oil, coconut, um, nut butters, seeds, all the things that contain virtually no protein or no carbs and are just 100% fat. The reason why you want to have an abundance of healthy fats in your system is because all of your 70 trillion cells are made up of fat. They all have a fatty lipid bilator, which helps how the cells communicate, how it affects hormones, make up hormones, helps with mood. Your brain is mainly fat. There's so many reasons why fat is such a critical part of what you're putting in your body. The other important thing is when it comes to the production of ketones, your body uses these fat sources, whether it's from the food that you're eating or if you have excess fat in the body, your liver will take that fat and produce it into ketones. And that is where the main fighting anti-cancer power comes from. The production of ketones or getting into ketosis is how your body is going to fight cancer, fight any abnormal cells, and really help have a robust immune system. Now, the amount of fat that you have in each day really does depend on your own body weight and also on your personal genetics. So if you are someone who does not metabolize fat well and you know that you're not breaking it down based on your stools or floating, you feel very, your gut feels upset every time you have a fattier meal or you feel nauseous, then you may wanna look into a digestive enzyme, something to support that fat breakdown, something with lipase or hydrochloric acid in it. But generally, you wanna aim for at least 50 grams, if not 100 grams of fat every single day. The next macronutrient in the pyramid would be the protein. This also depends on genetics and what your ultimate goals are and also your body weight. In general, aiming for at least 50 grams of protein a day would be the minimal amount that you should have just to carry on mood, immune system, hormone balance, and just to feel strong. If you're looking for muscle mass increase and you're working out and you wanna see muscle gains, then you may even wanna match the amount of protein you have to your body weight. Now be careful with that one because it can be very hard on your kidneys if you're having too much protein, especially if it's lumped all in one or two meals. Just to give you an example of that, to get 50 grams of protein is not that challenging. About the size of your palm is about 20 grams of protein. Then one egg would be about six grams. And then if you were adding a protein shake, whether it's from whey isolate, hemp, from flax seeds, even brown rice protein powders, all of them have about 15 to 30 grams of protein per scoop. And remember, even vegetables and greens have protein in it as well. So there's many ways to get enough protein, even if you are vegan or vegetarian, it's a lot tougher. 
and you may not find the best quality. So for example, soy or tofu, those can be processed, maybe GMO, maybe create more inflammation in the body, maybe your body doesn't digest the estrogens from tofu very well. So it is a lot tougher to get as much protein that you're required to have if you are a vegan, but it's definitely possible. All right, now the last part of that pyramid is the carbohydrates. So you want to have under 20 to 30 grams of carbs every single day. Now that may seem impossible because just having a big vegetable salad, healthy, just vegetables can be high in carbs. So the trick here is it's the net carbs. So if you were to look on an ingredient list, you would see the total amount of carbohydrates then you would see the amount of fiber that it has and you want to subtract the fiber from the total and that would give you the net amount of carbs. So that net amount needs to be under 30 grams if you want your body to be more fat adapted and to produce these ketones. It is very challenging for your body to produce ketones if you're getting too many carbohydrates in your day. I find counting calories, counting macros, counting carbohydrates, doing all the calculations, extremely frustrating and time consuming and I don't love it. And the only reason why I make sure to talk about that in this video is because it's not something that you need to do forever. It really is something that you just need to understand the food basics and know what is high in carbs and what is something that has a very low amount of net carbs so it can be sustainable. So for example, I just know off the top of my head, brown rice pasta, very high in carbs. It won't have much fiber in it and it's gonna spike your glucose, spike your insulin levels. And it's something that I just personally stay away from because I know that it's going to give me a sugar crash right after. Now you take that, for example, compared to almonds and Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, pistachios even, a lot of those nuts and seeds they could have total high carb, which is a high amount. However, it's high in fiber as well. So if you look at the nutrition label, you read the back of it and you say, okay, one cup is only going to be three grams of net carbs. Then that allows you to have so many other things in your day versus having the pasta, which that'll reach your limit, maybe within one full cup, and then you're done for your carb load. If you're having a challenging time getting your carbs under that amount, make sure you refer to my previous video about snacking because a lot of times it's not even that you're hungry, it's just the fact of something to do or your hormones may be imbalanced or maybe even your gut has issues going on where you're craving things where you don't really necessarily need them. So for this week, I want you to really focus on getting an abundance of healthy fats, getting enough protein in your day and really minimize how many carbohydrates you have for the week. Now, if you're someone who feels awful without getting enough carbs and you just feel tired and you feel like you do too much exercise or you're just, your body requires more carbohydrates, make sure to listen to my next video all about minimizing what's called the keto flu. The keto flu is when you're not fat adapted and your body is so reliant on this carbohydrate load that you can start to feel dizzy, lightheaded. You can feel just more tired and irritable and even nauseous if you do not follow this process properly. If you're used to eating a high carbohydrate load and you now are following under 20 or 30 grams of net carbs and you feel awful, make sure to listen to the next video because I'm gonna go through all the tricks that you can apply to make this process a lot easier and sustainable.